Now on BBC One, I wonder if they'd ever have a round on the subject of being concise. and challenging game where I ask my four guests to speak on a subject that I give them and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviating from the subject. And to meet the four exciting guests today, well, first of all, we welcome that consummate actress Lisa Goddard and beside her the writer and comedian Richard Morton and on my left the very talented musician Richard Branch and finally the irrepressible comedy performer, man of comedy, Tom O'Connor. Please welcome all four of them. And they're going to try and display their verbal wit and dexterity as they speak on the subject they give them, and they will challenge according to well or how well they're doing it. And we'll begin the show with Lisa Goddard today. Lisa, the subject we have... I don't know why this subject has been chosen for you, Lisa, but it's rude words. Oh. Can you talk on the subject of rude words starting now? When I was a girl being educated at the Convent of the Sacred Heart in Farnham, Surrey, the rudest word we knew was armpit. For some reason, this innocuous part of the human body reduced us to helpless, gibbering wrecks on the, lying on the floor with tears rolling down our faces. At any solemn moment, and there were many and oft of these in that establishment, a mention of that little rudery and and serried ranks of schoolgirls would be lying down like nine pins. Uh, Tom, you've challenged. I think, it, it, well, there's lots of things, but hesitation is certainly one I of them. I think so. Yes. I thought she did very well. Well, you went for 36 seconds. I wow. think that's Johnny. Go no, but she did hesitate then. I Tom. did. So I that's a correct challenge. Uh, Tom O'Connor gets a point for a correct challenge. He takes over the subject, and there are 34 seconds available starting now. Rude words are. Very unusual in our family. Uh, Richard Branch, the challenge. That's very mean of me, because Tom Rennie just got going, but there was a bit of hesitation. He didn't get going, and he went for one <laughs> second. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There was a definite hesitation, yes. Yes. Please. Right. So, Richard, and point to him for a correct challenge. You take over the subject. There are 30 seconds available. Rude words starting now. Well, I think you need rude words, because every now and then, when something awful happens, some frustration hits you, and... <laughs> Lisa, why are you challenged? Um, I don't know. I've, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say some, but of course he said some and something. So That's it's a right, really yes. stupid challenge. So just, you know, just ignore it. Just pretend I didn't do that. No, I can't do that. <laughs> what happens? If someone's interrupted, they get a point for an incorrect challenge. Oh. So, Richard, you have another point. Oh. You still have rude words and you have uh, 23 seconds starting now. The trouble is, these days, you hear rude words all the time on the television, on the bus. <laughs> yes? Repetition of honour! Hurrah! <laughs> we usually let the things like that go, Lisa. Oh, do you? On the, yes. But it, it was correct. Was it, it was a repetition of yes. on the. So, Lisa has another point. <laughs> she, uh, she hasn't got another point. It's her first point, actually. Cause Good you, you. Because you started, <laughs> yes. Uh, you have a point for a correct challenge. Correct. You take over the subject. There are 17 seconds. Rude words starting now. Rude words usually refer to parts of the body or bodily functions, like bum or fart. My granny, though, thought that a bottom was a rude word, so we had to say sit upon. What? <laughs> 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 Shock, really. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. To hear Lisa Goddard say those words has made my day, frankly. It's been yes. a, um, what, I think hesitation, actually, yeah. Well, you mean hesitation. her saying sit upon has made your day, has uh, it? Yeah, I didn't, know, <laughs> I didn't know we could use the S word, uh, sit upon. Right. Uh, it was a hesitation. Yeah, well I done, Richard. So. You listen, no, we're going to hear from you on this subject in this round. There are five seconds available. Rude words starting now. But as Lisa was saying, serried ranks of schoolgirls, that phrase has stayed in my mind for the last two minutes. <laughs> Sherry <laughs> ranks of school girls. Yeah. Whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point on this occasion. It was Richard Morton, so at the end of the round, he is equal in the lead with Richard Branch. We have two Richards, two Dickies on the show, and uh, we're going to have a Easy. bit of a problem there, aren't we? <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Uh, which Richard? Richard Morton. Mm. Would you like to take the next round? All right, then. The subject, patience. Tell us something about patience in just a minute, <clears throat> starting now. 
Uh, patience is something I know all about coming from the northeast of England because all natives of that part of the world, after a certain altercation or argument, will then have a fight and then find themselves in casualty. When in accident and emergency... <laughs> Lisa, I think a little hesitation. No, so, no, so, he was no, going he with style and Sorry. aplomb. No, no, no. No, we can get too over-conscientious, aren't right. we? Okay. Too keen on... on uh, You're uh, keen. I am, she's, I she's am. Dead Surrey ranks the school girls, <laughs> sit upon us, sit and upon. you stop me. You should, oh, and yeah. Richard, uh, you've got an incorrect challenge <laughs> yeah. there, so you have another point for that, and you still have, you have 49 seconds to continue on patience starting now. Oh, in accident and emergency, um, we can... Uh, He's repeating yeah. accident and emergency. And he did indeed, yes, Tom. Indeed, so you have a correct challenge, Tom O'Connor. You yeah. take over the subject, 46 seconds available. Patience starting now. Patience not only is a virtue, of course, it's also a game of cards. I used to play it at college when I was a, a young lad, and it, it, it build, it's character building. Patience. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> kind of hesitation, but there was two builds in there, really, which I think... Which one do you want? I'll go for building twice, thank you. All right. You can have either, right, but I didn't know. I might disagree with one, but I was thinking at the time. Right. There are 38 seconds available. <laughs> Patience. Back with you, Richard. Another point, of course, starting now. In hospital, two Geordies can even start a fight. You'll often see them sitting in opposite hospital beds. <laughs> 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 Very close, very I hesitated good. myself there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lisa, that definitely was hesitation. That was a mic thing. I was talking properly. Interpret it when you get confused like that as hesitation. So, Lisa, you have the, the correct challenge. You have another point for that. There are 33 seconds available. <laughs> it's patience <laughs> starting now. Voltaire said that medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease. My husband is a typical male when it comes to illness. He says, no, I'm fine. I don't need to go to bed. Droops around the house, sneezing coughing, looking terrible, feeling... Uh, Surely this is deviation, this is not patience, this is illness. <laughs> well, I, I thought she was conveying to me that her, her husband by that time was a patient, though yeah. uh, she didn't establish it very strongly, did she? Talking born up, uh, I think so. Yes, I think so. It's a difficult job in which to interpret, but yes, deviation, now illness and not patience. Right, it's with you, uh, Tom O'Connor, and there are 16 seconds available. Patience starting now. Patients are wonderful people because they have to put up with things in hospital that nobody else would ever have to do. They have nurses who wake them up to give them sleeping tablets. Uh, I'm yes. sorry, he said have twice. He did say have twice. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's the <laughs> dead keenest player of the game. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sorry, I'm just I... trying to get a point, love. You know, I keep having points taken away. You don't have, ever have points taken away <laughs> in just a minute. You just only give them to other people. gain points for correct challenge. But if it's an incorrect challenge, then, then well, you might, might say you've given them to somebody else. But yeah. patience, that was correct. The eight seconds starting now. Patients have a very difficult time at the moment with the NHS, I think. They have to wait in corridors, sitting on trolleys. They wait for the doctor. For... And oh! <laughs> oh! No! <laughs> I thank our audience for that spontaneous round of applause, but quarter or even half a second before Richard uh, Morton challenged, and your challenge was? Wait, it was a... Yes, a repetition, repetition of wait. wait. So, uh, uh, Richard, you have a quarter of a second on patience <laughs> starting now. You'll see two Geordie Bees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you the gag as well, Nicholas? Can I tell you the joke? Yeah, yeah, tell us yeah. the joke. I was going to say, you'd see two Geordie blood donors sitting in opposite hospital beds, and one of them will say, are you looking at my pint? That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> It wasn't really worth it, was oh, it, Richard? Thanks, <laughs> At the end of that round, Richard Morton has, in spite of his jokes, <laughs> taken the lead. He's just ahead of Lisa Goddard and uh, Tom O'Connor. And uh, Richard Branch, it's your turn to begin. The subject is nursery food. Tell us something about nursery food in 60 seconds, if you can, starting now. Nursery food must be the most difficult kind of food to prepare because of who you're making it for. It's not as if you've got adults in a posh restaurant who will put up with anything you stick in front of them for fear of infuriating the chef. Uh, Tom O'Connor. I think you said four twice. He did. I think My it, gosh, I, it's a tough show this today, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Uh, Tom, correct well, challenge. Lisa yes. started it. So, <laughs> right, I forgot what the topic is now. <laughs> well, it's all right. You've got 47 seconds. Nursery food, starting now. As an ex-school teacher. start, did he? No one challenged then, you see. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and they still haven't challenged. Oh, I don't know. Richard. <laughs> um, interruption by you. Yes. <laughs> Hesitation. Hesitation. Hesitation by Nicholas, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he did hesitate a long time. Richard, you got in rather late. Brilliant, brilliant reaction there. I mean, you came in there like a knife. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you have nursery foods back with you. 36 seconds starting now. So you need to make the nursery food palatable for the little children who eat it, because they will reject it if it's slightly... <laughs> Lisa, yes. Hesitation, Yes, I think, indeed, probably. Lisa. Yes, I think there so. are 28 seconds available. You tell us something about nursery food starting now. I love nursery food. Cottage pie, shepherds of the same, bananas and custard, jelly, tapioca, semolina. <laughs> <laughs> Hesitation. I think really, so, Lisa. Pepper. Yeah. I ran out yeah. of nursery food. But I would love to order shepherds of the same. <laughs> Let's go around a pub now. What do you want for your lunch? I'll have Shepherd to the same, please. <laughs> right. Richard, correct challenge. There are 18 seconds. You tell us something about nursery food starting now. Up in Newcastle, where I'm from, we love nursery foods because they're all made out of lard. Chips, fried eggs, um, baked beans and yes. hesitation foods. Um, 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 We call that hesitation. 12 seconds, Lisa. Nursery food starting now. The trouble is when you have small children that you put on an enormous amount of weight because of the nursery food. Feed the little ones, they don't eat it, so you think, i oh, better not waste it, I'll shove it down my own throat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Lisa Gollard, speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point at the end of that round. She has moved forward. She's now equal in the lead with Richard Morton and Tom O'Connor. Your turn to begin. The subject is the millennium. As if we haven't... Yeah, they're already <laughs> groaning in the audience already. Well, maybe Tom will tell you something else about the millennium that we haven't heard, but you have 60 seconds to try and do it, starting now. The millennium is going to give us good and bad news. The best news, I think, hopefully, will be the Queen Mother will still be alive. She'll be as old as a century, so she'll be the first Queen Mother in history who'll get a telegram from her own daughter. And Richard Brown's challenge. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Two we, Queen Mothers. We have, you can't have two Queen Mothers. No. We've only got one. OK. In, in this game, you can only have your one. <laughs> Richard, correct challenge. Another point. Uh, the Queen... No, the millennium. And there uh, are <laughs> 52 seconds, starting now. I'm one of those pedantic people who will be celebrating the millennium on the 31st of December 2000 because, strictly speaking, it doesn't start until then. It would be like having your first birthday on the day you were born. Yes. Two days there, I think. There were two days. Yes. No, birthday is no. one word. Is it? Oh, yes. Right. And so you would <laughs> day is another word. So, yes, grammatically, that's right. So, uh, 37 seconds for you to continue, having got another point, Richard, on uh, the millennium starting now. But the great thing is, all the parties that will be happening at the time everyone expects them, I'll be joining in as well. So, basically, you get two goes. So, the first time we will all celebrate this fantastic calendar event... <laughs> And Lisa. I'm afraid it's a hesitation. Yes, let me just stop. Apologise. You've got a correct challenge. And Lisa, you've got the subject. You've got the millennium. You don't want it. Well, you've got to try and go on it. How many seconds have I got? And you've got 23 seconds. The millennium, starting now. I'm not looking forward to the millennium. We've decided to get away from the world, just close the door, get in huge amounts of champagne, chocolates, caviar, and just. She suddenly saw sort of the lifestyle she was yeah, presenting. She's got a bit overwhelmed by it. I'd like to hesitate uh, and hesitate to um, say you hesitated. I did. Yeah, but it was a wonderful party. You were out there coming. Because <laughs> Lisa was off, wasn't she, with the chocolate and the champagne and the caviar? Yeah. So I'm sorry. Are about we that, all Lisa. invited? Yeah. Richard, you have the correct challenge. You have 12 seconds. The millennium starting now. Tony Blair is quoted as saying the Millennium Dome will be the greatest day trip ever. And I thought, Tony, you've got to get out more. Yes, and Two Tonys, I think. Two Tonys, yes. Oh, it's a difficult game, isn't it? The Millennium's with Tom O'Connor, with six seconds to go, starting now. The Millennium Bug is the thing we're all worried about, of course. This is apparently going to affect... Uh, Lisa, your child. I'm not worried about it at all. No. <laughs> not at all. Lisa, you have a bonus <laughs> point, because we like the challenge. But you interrupted Tom O'Connor, so he gets a point for being interrupted, and he has one second to talk still on the Millennium, starting now. The Bug will affect... And... Speaking as the whistle went, gain that extra point for doing so, <laughs> and what is the situation? It's very, very close. Lisa Goddard's actually in the lead. She's done one ahead of Richard Morton <laughs> and Tom O'Connor, and only one behind is Richard Ranch. And, uh, Lisa, we're yep. back with you to begin. Oh, no. The subject is snoring. 
I don't know whether any snorers in your family or you know anything about it, but tell us something about it in just a minute, starting now. Great snoring and little snoring are villages near where I live, and the postmaster of one is named Mr. Go to Bed. My great uncle Walter comes to say, Very welcome, guest, but we do have a problem at bedtime because he snores for England. And when he's asleep, the house is quiet, we all lie there, we hear the how. <laughs> 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 great. Story, him, mm. Hesitation, I'm yes. afraid, Nicholas. Yes, it was. And also, your great uncle was maimed. Was Did he? You know, that's what you said. He was maimed. Maimed. Yeah, oh. you maimed him. It probably was. What, what's your yeah. name, John? <laughs> <laughs> Stop that snoring. Okay. Richard uh, Morton, you have 40 seconds to tell us something about snoring starting now. By placing your thumb and index finger over the nostrils of the offending snorer, just for a second you will prevent them from carrying on, but however the temptation to keep your hand there sometimes is just so great that you want to just put it there and sorry everyone, I've lost it. Okay. <laughs> Tom O'Connor. Yes, uh, I think hesitation, deviation and everything. Yeah. On that one. Deviation, you murder I'll rub it in when you <laughs> challenge you. Right. But it was hesitation, so Tom O'Connor, you've got snoring and you've got... Uh, 27 seconds starting now. One of life's biggest questions is why is the person who snores loudest the first one to fall asleep? <laughs> I have an open. <laughs> you challenge. Pause for laugh. I know. Comedian. <laughs> That's my job. Yeah. It's built into him. In just a minute, you have to ride the laugh. <laughs> we did. And nothing we did is worse. Any. And nothing's worse than this game than waiting for a laugh that doesn't come That's either. True. <laughs> it's like my act. <laughs> right, uh, Lisa, correct challenge. There are 21 seconds available snoring starting now. The husband of old Aunt Mary goes to sleep and soon the house reverberates with the noise of his... It's <laughs> 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 a drag. Repetition of... <laughs> <laughs> we still don't know what it was it reverberates yeah. with. I know. Rather, rather, what a strange one of your rude words, words. <laughs> Right, snoring is with you, Richard Vrance, and you have uh, 13 seconds starting now. I don't snore. At least I've never heard myself do it. And that's the great thing about snoring. You never hear yourself. And... Uh, never right. heard twice. Never heard. Uh, yes, and right, yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not true. You can wake yourself up with a big snore. Don't tell them, Nicholas. We weren't there together. <laughs> <laughs> One's life can be revealed on this show, but that wasn't one of them. Right, Lisa, with you. Five seconds, snoring, starting now. Snoring is caused by the soft palate vibrating with wind, so it sounds like a flute. <laughs> and has increased her lead at the end of the round. And Richard Morton, we would like you to take the next subject. A right cock-up. <laughs> <laughs> Try and talk on the subject of a right cock-up. 60 seconds starting now. I think it's fair to say that we all love a right cock-up. Yes, indeed, I certainly do. Um, but what springs to mind are television shows like uh, It'll Be All Right on the Night or Auntie's TV Bloomers, which show the mistakes in television programmes which have been made by TV celebrities and performers, uh, which we love to watch. Or Blue Peter, when that elephant went rampaging round. Do you remember? And he left all the little bits around on the floor, which was much funnier than the actual show. Uh, or he could have gone back to one and said, that's one I made earlier. Um, uh, <laughs> no? <laughs> yes. No, we did. challenge. Um, I'm afraid uh, you made that. He ran out. Obvious. He put me right it's off bad. with that subject, Lisa. Correct yeah. challenge, Lisa. And you have a right cock up, and there are 36 seconds available starting now. My chickens like to peck around the yard and spend the day on the muck heap. Now, Sean to clear the cockerel likes to get up there first so that he is the cock up on top of the heap. The girls. <laughs> I'm glad you were challenged then. I thought what was going to come next. Uh, I know. Repetition of the word up. Yes. Up, yes. Right. right. No, up is on the card. So, um, you have an incorrect challenge, Lisa. Oh, no. Let's hear about your cock <laughs> now. There are, what is it, there are 18, sorry, 23 seconds available starting now. I'm not going to tell you any more about the chickens, but a cock up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Richard uh, Branch. That was a little hesitation. That was, was a major hesitation. There are 19 seconds now for you to tell us about a right cock up starting now. There must be a reason why we use the phrase cock-up to mean some kind of debacle or disaster. And maybe something happened centuries ago with a cock which gave it its name. For example, it could have been a competition where two cocks were involved in a fight or a race and the winning one was the right cock and so they tried to put the right cock up. <laughs> So, you were speaking as the whistle went, Richard Branch, she's got an extra point for doing so. And it's very interesting for those who are interested in points. They're all equal in second place, just behind Lisa Goddard, who's got a short lead. Richard Branch, 
Will you take the next subject? <laughs> Overnight guests. Tell us something about those in just a minute, starting now. Imagine the scene. You've got some friends around at your house. You've had a lovely dinner, perhaps a glass of wine. You've watched some TV and you've talked into the earth. Yes. We've had at least three youths there. Youths, youths, youths. Yes, I think that was very strong. Sorry. Repetition there. So, you've got in with 53 seconds to go, Tom, on uh, overnight guests. Tell us something about them starting now. The worst guests, of course, to stay overnight have got to be relatives, because relatives have always heard all your stories. No matter what you say, they know the tagline. Yes, Lisa. Sorry, repetition of relatives. Relatives. Did I say relatives? Sorry. You did say relatives. So, Lisa, you got in first. Another point to you. Increasing your lead over my guests is with you. And there are 47 seconds starting now. Guests and fish stink after four days. But personally, I love overnight guests. I spend a lot of trouble. I do up the bedroom, put flowers, books, a radio, biscuits, water jug, glass, clean tub. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is all this for the guests or the fish? Yeah. <laughs> the guests. I think you'd run out of things to I do have. for the guests. I'd run out of uh, Mind you, I wouldn't mind coming to stay if we get all that through. <laughs> but, uh, Richard! Bit of correct. invitation. Red, yes, yeah. definitely. Richard, a uh, correct challenge. 33 seconds. Overnight guests starting now. The trouble is, you never know if during the night when you're asleep, they're going to get up and start going through your things. For example, you might. <laughs> Tom. Massive hesitation there. All right, enough hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, tell us something about overnight guests with 23 seconds available starting now. Wives are a nuisance because when we know guests are coming, they spend all day and possibly the day before preparing. <laughs> the, uh, Richard. Hesitation. Yes, I think he'd hesitate because he'd repeated something. I know, you? yes, I have. That's what happens, you see. <laughs> Sometimes if you keep going with panache, Tom, they don't notice it. But Richard, correct challenge. Yeah, and you, you have 15 that? seconds on you. overnight guests starting now. The most unwelcome kind of overnight guests are the ones you might pick up in a sort of a way, at a sort of a place. And... <laughs> and <there> were... <laughs> I'm oh, glad you stopped me. Somebody stopped me. I don't think I want to hear the rest of that story. <laughs> Nor do I. No. <laughs> Nine seconds, no, Lisa. No, you said sort of a sort of a. Yeah, I know. Tell us right. something else that you do for your overnight guests. Nine seconds, starting now. My overnight guests, when they arrive in the afternoon, can ride the horses. They can help me muck out. They can take the... Uh, I think we had two days there. Did have two days, yes. Yeah. You're getting keen again. I am. He's getting keen. <laughs> right, Tom, you've got four seconds. Overnight guests, starting now. The worst thing about overnight guests staying in hotels is the manager is never there. If you stay... <laughs> Speaking of course, I'm going that extra point, and he's moving to the second place just behind Lisa Goddard, who's still in the lead. And uh, Tom O'Connor, it's also your turn to begin. Oh, right. Spotted Dick. That's a good <laughs> subject, isn't it? <laughs> 60 seconds, if you can. Starting <laughs> now. I was a school teacher, and in all the days that I worked in my profession, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Oh, Lisa. Oh, I had to, but he just hesitated. I know, I know. I know. Please don't. She's <laughs> <laughs> so kind. She wants you to go on. You I do. I want to hear, to hear about the your story. spotted dick. Well, you tell us something about your spotted dick, and you've got uh, 57 <laughs> seconds starting now. Spotted Dick is a public house near where I live, so named after Richard III. Before he lost his horse, he came through the area, fell down a hill, cut his face, and had spots. All over it, so he was known as. <laughs> <laughs> what rubbish they talk sometimes, isn't it? But it's delightful, yeah. right? <laughs> Which was a bit of hesitation, sorry, there, because he made it all up, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it was just all just twaddle, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. I know, but that's what you can do in just a minute, okay. you see. And as long as you keep going with style, they don't know whether it's not right. 43 seconds, Spotty Dicks with you, Richard Morton, starting now. I would love to get German measles and then get arrested and then. Fa and two, two gets. Gets. Oh, and then get. And then get. And then get. So, Tom O'Connor, right, you've got the subject I mean, back again. I've been a little time before. You've got your spotted dick back, and there are 38 seconds starting now. When I was a school teacher, I supervised the meals. Uh, yes, you oh, said that before, I'm so didn't you? sorry. I can't stand it. But you said school teacher before. Oh. You did. You started oh. off before with school teacher. You well, can't that, wasn't that a different life when I did no, that? No, no, no. <laughs> Because you've used that twice in two different things. I know, but you see, <laughs> if you've said it before, you can't say it in the same round again. Ah. When you started before, you start off. When I was a school teacher, and it's quite a long phrase too. Mm. All right. So Lisa got in first. I'm sorry. Don't worry. Can't right. Stand it. Spotty Dick. 
34 seconds, Lisa, starting now. Spotted dick is delicious pudding. I absolutely love it. You make it with flour and suet and a little bit of butter and water. Make the pastry, roll it up. And the very most important ingredient of all are the raisins. You fill it full of these little dried fruit. Uh, Hesitation, I think. Yes, yes, you couldn't get something else for the dried fruits out. But raisins, right. So, Tom O'Connor, don't start over saying when you were a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Spotted dick is with you, and there are 16 seconds, 17 actually, starting now. When I was a student, <laughs> I used to enjoy... <laughs> Sorry, so he was Tom, riding his laugh yeah. and his applause, so I'm going to be generous and say, yes, you really, uh, you, you had us with that one, so come on, I'm not, I'm not going to charge any points, I'm going to say, keep going, 11 seconds, Spotted Dick starting now. My favourite pudding was always Spotted Dick. Others I liked. Semolina was OK, but sloppy. Tapioca, ugh. Spotted dick was good because it felt homemade. Obviously with custard, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, right. Tom O'Connor kept going to the whistle when the next point for doing so. He's creeping up on Lisa Goddard, which is rather <laughs> the deepest in this game. But uh, Lisa's just in the lead, two ahead. And then it's uh, Richard Morton and Richard Ranch in that order. And Lisa Goddard... Your turn to begin. Now, here's Again. something for you, Lisa. Yeah? Muscles. Right. There's so many different ways you can take it, but just talk on this. Just a minute, starting now. Muscles are bivalves of the family Lamella branchia. You find them between the low and the high watermark at the beach. Yeah? yeah. Can I interrupt just because she sounds like a smart aleck? <laughs> <laughs> And if you want, you've interrupted. Right. I'll give you a bonus point, because it was a naughty but facetious remark, which made the audience laugh, so you Thank get you. a bonus there. But Lisa gets a point for being interrupted. Certainly. And she continues on mussels, and there are 53 seconds available, starting now. My favourite way of cooking mussels is meunier. Take an onion, cut it up very small, cook it in a little bit of butter, throw in some white wine, water, mussels. Make sure the mussels are alive, because if they're not, you can be very, very poorly indeed and end up dead yourself. Cook them in the pan for about ten minutes, then pour them into soup bowls, serve with bread, freshly made, white, wholemeal, granary... <clears throat> with... <laughs> Someone help me! Uh, we, were, we were actually filibustering by doing nothing, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> right, there you do, there we are. It's, it's, Very I mean. It's turning into ready, steady cooking. Muscles! Uh, correct challenge, Richard Ranch, and there are 27 seconds available starting now. There are several places which are famous for their mussels. Belgium is one of them. You go to Antwerp, you can get the most fabulous mussels. But, of course, Dublin had a mussel seller who was enshrined in a song in Dublin's fair city where the girls... <laughs> yes, Richard Ranch. Repetition of the word Dublin. Dublin, You're yes. Right. Right, Dublin, uh, repetition, Richard Morton, and there are 14 seconds, muscles starting now. Where I come from in Newcastle, we've got muscles on my eyelashes, cos we're that tough. Muscles on the little bit on my lips where we have tattoos done. Uh, yeah, why are you challenging Tom? He, he repeated, wah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sure for why I? <laughs> he said, muscles on wah lips. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think that was a legitimate challenge. It's just his idiosyncratic way of speaking. Oh, he, said it, he, said it he said what twice. <laughs> <laughs> they meant different things. Yeah, they? I did what an hour, didn't I? Yeah, you did. But if okay. you come from Newcastle or wherever okay. you come from, you, you can you know, take the <laughs> Where did you come from? OK. Well, Seven yeah. seconds, muscle, start, you know. Where I come from, people are so hard, they get tapped. Where, yes? Where I've come from, he said that twice. Said did that I? Right? Yes, you did. I've just come from there. <laughs> there you had to go back there. <laughs> right. Tom, you've got in with five seconds to go. Muscles starting now. Muscles I admire. My son-in-law, actually, is one of these bodybuilders. He... Arms like this. Muscles... Yes. Wait a minute. Whoosh. Before the whistle, what happened? That was a little bit of hesitation. There was a little bit of hesitation. Yes. Mm. So, with half a second to go, Richard Morton, you've got muscles starting now. From my place of origin. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, yes. So, Richard Morton speaking as the whistle went down that extra point with no more time today to play just a minute. So, let me tell you, and the final situation was that Richard Ranch was in fourth place and then Richard Morton in that order and then Tom O'Connor's one point behind Lisa Goddard. So, Lisa, you're the winner today. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, and on behalf of Lisa Goddard, Richard Morton, Richard Vance, Tom O'Connor and myself, tune in next time we want to play Just a Minute. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye.